Great. We are in the book of Acts. And it is the last chapter of the book of Acts. Been quite a journey. I think probably a year we've been going through this book. And the Lord has taught us tremendous things um, and uh, principles to, to abide with. So uh, we're going to pray and get right into it. God, we thank you again. We thank you for the privilege. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you for the finished work of the cross. And we thank you that even as we celebrate this season, the Christmas season, we'd celebrate it with knowledge. We'll celebrate the incarnation of God, the incarnation that Jesus became man and dwelt amongst us to save us, to bring us back to the Father. And Lord, this morning, even as we go through your word, I pray that your spirit will be at work in us, cause our hearts to uh, return to you. Those who have, had gone astray, I pray that it will be drawn to you through your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we, we, we continue with this, uh, you know, last transit of the Apostle Paul from Israel, Caesarea, to Rome, Italy. And he is to stand trial before Caesar Nero. That is around 60 or 61 AD. And uh, we're gonna see that also he was under house arrest in Rome but they, they were kind of nice to him. They allowed uh, friends and people to come and visit him. And Paul, in this last portion, would appeal to his Jewish elders, Jewish friends. Um, and he's going to preach a very powerful message also. Would bring, it will bring divisions among these people, but at the end of the day, uh, the, the, the conclusion will be very beautiful. Let's read together here. It says, Now when they had escaped, they then found out that the island was called Malta. And the natives showed us, showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled of fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out bef uh, because of the heat and fastened on his end. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his end, they say to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer who though he, is, he had escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow him to leave. But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But they, after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. Very interesting. Um, this, this natives, just the beginning of it, they, they showed kindness to the people they didn't know. They, all they knew that these were prisoners and, you know, they've gone through a lot of trouble in the, uh, in the sea. They just escaped there by, you know, it was just a miracle that they're out of that ship. And they sought, you know, to help them bring wood and make some fire for, for the warmth of them so that they would 
kind of have uh, a time to figure out what next. They had the centurion and these other soldiers with them. So they were kind of regrouping to see how they're going to get to Rome. We see that it was still stormy, still raining, but these natives showed kindness to the people they didn't know. You know, oftentimes it's easier for us to show kindness to the people we well know, right? I want to show you kindness because I know you. I want to love you because I know you. I want to do this because I know you. But if it's a strange group of people or people we don't know, it is very hard for us to do that, right? Even when people are just saying hi on the streets, you, you want to make sure you know them, <laughs> right? They say hi, like, do I know you? You know, that is what we ask in the inside. But like, hey, we go to the same church. Oh, hi. <laughs> it's, it's quite amazing. We want to do that for the, for the people we know, but if we don't know people, it is quite hard for us to show kindness. But these natives, uh, I don't know what their intentions were, but they just want, wanted to be nice to uh, these prisoners and the rest of the guys. And um, when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, which means that now that, you know, they're getting a little bit busy, it's cold, we want some warmth, and these natives are kind of helping. They, they already have some wood, and Paul is like, hey, I'm not going to sit here and see people do things for me and just lay around. This is not the man Paul. Paul, it doesn't matter whether he's traveled, you know, it's jet lag or ship lag or car lag or bike or whatever. He's going to work. And that is the kind of man we should emulate, you know. Some of us, you know, the little, little of the, uh, this, I have a call so I can go to church. I have this, I can go to work. I have, that is not Paul. We know what has happened to him. Shipwrecked. He nearly died. He escaped. And then he's right here. You, you guys remember he was told nearly dying? His figure right now is not very appealing. <laughs> you, you wouldn't like him. But nonetheless, he wants to help. And as he's doing that, there's a, a viper comes because of the heat and jumped and fastened itself in Paul's hand. Now take a moment and think about it. For many of us, just the sight of looking at a viper, what would you do? You'd scream louder than you are singing this morning, right? <laughs> we would scream at the top of our lungs because that is dangerous. Some of these vipers, they get you, 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 you don't have five minutes to leave. You would be screaming for your life. And Paul is right there, not even minding this thing. It's like, oh. You're here, okay. Can we get some more wood, please? <laughs> he, he's not concerned about this thing because he knows he's safe with the Lord. The Lord has made a promise that you're going to be where? A Rome. So whatever happens here, I don't care. I know the Lord. Even if it bites me, the Lord is going to heal me at the end of the day. The Lord has said I'm going to be there. And that is the goal, to be at Rome. When the natives saw the creature hanging from the hands of, uh, from his hand, they say to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking about this, I'm like, hey, human nature never changes. When bad things happen to you, like he's sinned against God, now see his life. What, what did you do to your forefathers? <laughs> They're after you. There's something strange about your life. There's something strange about your people are after you. All these crazy things will say very superstitious people we are. You see, whom though he has kept the sea, yet justice does not allow him to leave. 
But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that he would swell up and suddenly fall down and die. But after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him, they changed their mind and said that he was a god. (laughs) He wasn't harmed. So, depending with what is happening around you, you'll be called either a murderer or a god. The question is, what will be your response to all this? You're gonna get mad at them for calling you a murderer? Or you are going to enjoy when they call you a god? Because that is greater, right? What what are you gonna do? Because either way, we wanna choose something that seems nice. Madra, no, I'm not. A god, I like it. (laughs) I like it because there are goodies that comes with that. And we know that God does not share his glory with no one. So if you try to take it, you remember there was a man who died here. We studied it. God sends worms to kill him. Why? Because he did not give God the glory. Herod. He did not give God the glory, so God doesn't like it when you take his glory. So these people are like, we we change our minds. You know, the, the same people who cry today, hail, hail, Hosanna. The same people are gonna say, crucify him, crucify him. With the same breath, we bless, the same breath, we curse. What a twisted people we are. And it's not that that this generation alone, it's been there for ages, it's still there. When situation changes, we're gonna flow with it, we're gonna change our minds. Well, Luke chose to throw that story and that story is gone. And in that region, there was an estate of the leading citizen of the island whose name was Pablas, or Pablo, (laughs) the drug dealer Pablo. Pablo was right here in the island, he was the kingpin. Uh, this Pablo guy received us and entertained us courteously for three days. And it happened that the father of Pablo lay sick of a fever. And Paul went into him and prayed and laid his hand on him and healed him. What we are talking about today or this morning is divine appointments. That though we have been through a lot of trouble, shipwreck and uh, out of just a dangerous situation, nearly being killed by a viper, God still made it possible for this man to be alive. And through the way, God is opening another door. That this guy who, you know, is the, this is his territory. He rules in this island. Uh, This guy welcomes them. He was very courteous, but there was a problem. His father was not well. His father had a fever before Paul came. And so you see, if you're reading through, you see how God would make this plan for things to happen. They didn't know that this would happen. All they knew is that they were on transit to where? To Rome. And God is making this divine appointment for his name to be great or for people to know him at a greater capacity. And so, um, Publius' father was healed. So when this was done, the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came and were healed. As we study language, we, we are kind of very limited. You know, uh, some of our language are very primitive. 
Um, some languages are superior than others. You know, he, Hebrew language is superior than English. So English would just tell us, you know, healed and healed and healed. But this specific word that is used here, the Greek translation for this specific healing is translated medical, given medical attention. And remember, the one who is writing to us is a doctor, Dr. Luke. And think about it, that we have a lot of people who are now coming for medical attention, and because Luke is a doctor, all of a sudden he has a medical camp, attending to people, blessing God's people, helping them, or probably telling them about diet, <laughs> about, you know, just a lot of things that are medical. And this actually got me thinking, if your career is just meant to bring you food on the table and to pay your rent and to do your own things, you gotta think about it. You gotta think or you gotta change. If that is all you're gonna do with your career because that is all we do, right? You know, we're, we're trying to look for a career or even when we're choosing them, we are advised to go and do this because this other one, you know, when you do this course, you're not gonna get employment. So this is what sells. Be a doctor, because we get sick every time, right? <laughs> be a lawyer, because we'll always have cases. Or be, be, be a teacher, we'll always have kids in school. Be those kind of things. But what if God didn't call you to be a lawyer? What if he didn't call you to be a doctor? What if he didn't call you to be a teacher? What if he didn't? Because the giftings that God gave to this man, Dr. Luke, he's using them right now to bless the people of God. Helping them, giving advices, encouraging them. He's as well praying for them and they're getting help. And you know, we see this medical help with missionaries and we think it's just, some of them, that is their calling. They're doing it for the Lord. They've invested a lot in that to serve the people of God. So if your career cannot aid in the service of the kingdom, think about it. Think about it. The kind of business you do is not aiding the gospel in any way, think about it. All these people, they received help, they were healed. And after that, they also honored us in many ways. And when we departed, they provided such things as we, uh, as were necessary, all the things that were needed for us. They didn't know they would get these things along the way, but you know when God calls you and you are in motion, God will provide for you on the way. Sometimes we, we wanna ask a lot of questions. Well, what if I get in the, the middle of it and I have no money, I have no medical care, I have no this. Those are our concerns and they're genuine. You think the Lord doesn't know about it? He knows it before time. That's why he said go. And along the way, people were nice to them and the Lord used, actually God moved through Paul's action. God was moving in the people's lives. There is healing and a lot of things happening because Paul chose to take action. And they were blessed on the way. The things that they needed on the road, God provided. You know, we gotta trust Jesus when he says, go but don't carry extra coat. He knows that we'll need an extra coat along the way, but he will provide it. He will provide for it. So trust him. He knows better than we do. Or even when you pray for people and they don't get healed or they get healed, that ain't our focus. 
Our focus is to do the will of him who called us. When you pray for anyone in any circumstance, you are not responsible for their healing, but for their love. You're not responsible for their healing. That is up to God. But if they walk away not loved, that is on us and the ministry that God gave to you. So it is our daily duty to love on people and leave the rest to God. When people are not loved, that's between us. Why are you not loving people? Why are you not showing kindness to people? Why are you not just being a Christian? Because that is what Christians do, right? Being nice to people, being praying with people, encouraging people, showing mercy on people, especially to the brethren first, the Bible tells us. Whatever outcome would proceed from that, that is from the Lord. He knows it, and he will do it in his own time. So they were blessed as they were going on their way. After three months, we sailed in an Alexandrian ship whose figurehead was the twin brothers and which had wintered at the island. And landing at uh, Syracuse, we stayed three days. From there, we circled around and reached uh, Regium. And after one day, the south wind blew. And the next day, we came to uh, Puletoli, where we found brethren and were invited to stay with them seven days. And so, we went towards Rome. Now think about it for a moment, church. We've known all the the journeys, the missionary journeys that Paul went through. Meaning a lot of people had the gospel. And the road that he took, or the the, the places where God was leading them, they never knew they were going to get brothers over there. And here in verses 14, the Bible says, where we found a brethren. I mean, how, how is it refreshing? You, you go in a foreign land or in a foreign country, country, and you find people who love the Lord. It brings us joy, right? To know that you're not alone, you have people. God has people everywhere in this planet. And it is so refreshing to find the body of believers away from home. Right? I know many of us don't come from here. But it's so refreshing that we are gathered together today in the name of the Lord. Praising the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that is an indication of God's warmth and love towards his people. We have believers in Iraq. We have believers in Palestine, in China, in Japan. Everywhere. And I tend to think that, you know, those believers in the war-torn countries are more serious than many of us. They hold Christianity dear. Whether death would come to them, sicknesses, they remain steadfast. And probably they have learned it from the Apostle Paul that in any season that comes your way, learn to thank God for every situation that comes your way. So they met brethren over there. Spent seven days and they went again towards Rome. And there, from there, when brethren had uh, heard about us, they came to meet us as far as Epi Forum and three inns. When Paul saw them, he thanked God and took courage. He saw brethren, he thanked God, and took courage. 
Also an indication that along the way, you know, all these things are happening, Paul is like, man, uh, thinking of giving up. He's a man. Would those thoughts will always cross our minds. You know, you, you're like, yeah, I know the Lord spoke. I know he said we ought to go to this place. I know he made a promise. I know it's real. But the enemy also played tricks with our minds. They say, no, he said, but he's not here. Did God really say that you should not take of this fruit? Did God really say? Just putting doubt in our hearts. That is what he does. And this is quite encouraging to hear that Paul saw them, thanked God, and took courage. So, ah, I'm not alone. <laughs> they are brethren over here. I thought I was just going to be, you know, in prison and just the, 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 the usual elders sitting here to question me. It's like, no, they are brethren. And actually, they, they walked a day's journey to go and meet Paul. This, is, this was so special. Now when we came to Rome, this is like, like the epitome of the story of Paul. He had said, I want to be there. I want to go to Rome. I desire to go to Rome. And now this is, this is it. You know, it's like, hey, for the many of us who want to go to the States, say I. <laughs> I know, I know all of you. Yeah, visa, 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 visa. You go there, denied. Next, denied. <laughs> it's a way of life, man. What you gonna do about it? <laughs> Green cards. Just, you know what? Just print a green card with a scripture and paint it in your house. Be encouraged. So the Lord is with you right here, okay? Do you know they say that grass is always greener on the other side? Sometimes they spray paint it and you think it's more nicer. Stay home. If the Lord say you go, you go. If you say you stay home, you stay home. Don't try to push it. You push it and destroy your life. Amen, my visa people. <laughs> now, when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guards, but Paul was permitted to dwell by himself with the soldier who guarded him. This is also the good news, the good news for the centurion to deliver all the prisoners to where they were supposed to be delivered. Because if one escaped, that was a death penalty. So as he's handing these people over, we have read that this guy had a soft spot for Paul. And Paul is treated differently. He's taken to a different house, Oh, we, we're going to re read here that, uh, you know, they rented a house for Paul. <laughs> You're a prisoner. You have your own rented apartment. That's cool. But also, he was still in chains. There was a guard with him 24-7. <laughs> and as we have read before, they always have prisoners four hours a time. After four hours, another one would come. And, you know, this, these prisoners will be thinking, hey, wait. You're here in Rome, what brings you here? And you're thinking, what, what am I gonna share with these prisoners for four hours? You know, we, we, sometimes we get tired and it's only 45 minutes. Church, right? Someone is 45 minutes like, he's taking long today. I wanna try and do one hour today. We ain't gonna die. <laughs> Paul, Preach to this guy, they're chained. <laughs> Four hours. Like, hey, it's about Jesus. And then another guy came. Four hours. <laughs> another guy, four hours. And four hours. And four hours. Paul is not getting tired. 
preaching the gospel. Some of us will be gasping for breath. Paul is just preaching and preaching and preaching. And then he's going to make a case and try to find his uh, brothers. Here in verse 17, and it, it came to pass after three days that Paul called the leaders of the Jews together. So when they had come together, he said to them, men and brethren. In other words, he's including himself to this group of people, telling them, I'm a Hebrew like you. I'm a Jew like you. I'm your brother. Say, men and brethren, though I have done nothing against our people or the custom of our fathers, Yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had, when they had examined me, wanted to let me go, because there was no cause uh, for putting me to death. But when the Jews spoke against it, it, I, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, not that I had anything of which to accuse my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have called for you to see you and speak with you. Because for the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. For the hope of Israel that was spoken from the time of Moses and the prophets, they spoke about this hope And that is the hope that is getting me chained. Then they say to him, we neither receive letters from Judea concerning you, nor have any of these brethren who came reported or spoken any evil of you. But we desire to hear from you what you think especially concerning this sect. You guys remember the sect? They formally called it the sect of the Nazarene. (laughs) Yeah, all are from the sect of the Nazarene, if you didn't know. (laughs) We know that it is spoken against everywhere. (laughs) This is amazing. (laughs) Paul desired to go there to Rome. It's, It's actually taking them months to get to Rome. And he gets to Rome, he's never been here before, but Christianity has gotten roots there, but everything they do is just to speak against it. But these elders, those wisdom in what they say, they say, we want to hear it for ourselves. We want to hear you. Obedience to the call of God is very wonderful because that is what now is causing all these things to happen. Paul is obeying God to go because Jesus told him you'll be in Rome sharing the gospel and he's here. Customarily, Paul used to go when he was not in chain to the synagogues to preach. But he cannot go to the synagogue because he's bound. But the people from the synagogue are going to come to him. It is a divine appointment. God always makes things right in his appointed time. He's making a way. So these people will come and hear Paul. Say, we want to hear it. This sect of the Nazarene. So when they had appointed him a day, many came to him at his lodging. They came to his house. To whom he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus both from the law of Moses and the prophets that he did from morning till evening. Think about the kind of strength this man has. That is his life. Sharing the gospel, morning to evening, morning to evening, no problem. People would ask him questions, they would answer them. 
morning to evening. And some were persuaded by the things which were spoken, and some disbelieved. We studied that even in chapter 14. Everywhere gets these religious leaders. Always speak the gospel. We have people who will believe, and we have people who will not believe. It is the nature of human being, and it's also the nature of the gospel. That it gets to people, we have people who will believe. It gets to people, it ha- we have people who will run away from it. You know, men will reject God because they love their sin and don't want to turn to God. That is why we, lo- we, we love sin. That is why we reject Jesus Christ. For denouncing our sin means we are going to accept Jesus Christ. And we are not going to do those things anymore. But we still want to do them. We still want to rob a little bit. We still want to lie to people a little bit. No, no, no. That, that, that's, that's not Paul. That's not the apostle Paul. He will stand for righteousness. At the cost of his life, he will stand for righteousness. What about us? When situation comes to us. When you are before the council, are you going to water it down so that they don't shoot you? So that they don't think evil of you? That was not Paul. He preached the gospel to them, making a case for Jesus Christ. Some believed, some disbelieved. Maybe we had Pharisees and Sadducees. The Sadducees never believed in the deity. They never believed in, in the resurrection. The Pharisees did. So as they are fighting, actually now they are not fighting against Paul. They are fighting against themselves. <laughs> We've seen that trend. Paul always like, Boop. you guys, have fun. <laughs> Splitting the groups every time. You know, the Bible tells us that God's word is sharper than double-edged sword getting into, down to the bone marrow. Getting inside. If you are obedient, you're going to receive what the Lord says. If you're not, just living in rebellion, there's going to be an end to it. As I bring the worship team to come as we are reading this last portion. So when they did not agree amongst themselves, they departed after Paul had said one word. The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet to our fathers saying, this is what Paul read to them, said to them before they left. Go to these people and say, hearing you will hear, and shall not understand. And seeing you will see and not perceive. For the heart of these people have gone dull. Their ears are hard of hearing and their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. And therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles and they will hear it. (laughs) As brief as that. Send is going to these people. They've turned their blind eyes to the gospel. They're not receiving it. You know what the prophets wrote? The Gentiles are going to see it, they're going to receive it, and they're going to embrace it. If you refuse him, there are people who are going to accept him. And they're like, man, let, let, let's just go. <laughs> they're fighting against themselves. That's not our business. And when he had said these words, 
the Jews departed and a great dispute, and there was a great dispute amongst themselves. Then we have very refreshing last words. Then Paul dwelt two, whole two years in his own rented house and received all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence that no one, and no one for, was forbidding him. He was still in chain. Paul could not travel, but he could speak and write. There's no excuse. Though I, I can't go there. No, you, you can speak. God opens doors so that we can open our mouths to speak. Those doors are wide open. And if you can't speak, you can write. At the end of the day, the goal is for people to know. And Paul has uh, told us in uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 20, you know, for, for those who had the law, you know, I embraced the law so that I might reach them. Those without the law, I also became like them. To the weak, I became so that perhaps I could win some of them to Christ for the gospel. And you know that throughout his life, many of those things happened. He remained here two years. They say historically, um, they released him probably for five years. And after five years, he was taken to prison again. Uh, and then uh, at the end of that, he was beheaded by Nero. And they say historians, they tell us that Nero, at the beginning, he was not, he, he didn't show, uh, you know, signs of really being such an evil man. But when Paul was brought before him and Paul made a case for Christ before Nero, he got mad. He got mad and he changed his mind and Paul was beheaded. But you know, even when Paul is writing to the Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, verses 22, it says, And all the saints greet you, but especially those who are of Caesar's household. <laughs> the same household that beheaded him, there are a lot of them also who accepted Jesus Christ. So when you're preaching the gospel, just let it out and let God do his job. Let the Holy Spirit work in people's hearts. He knows our hearts better than any other man. So when you preach, just let it be. Preach and the Holy Spirit will come and change people's lives. Friends, do not compromise for anything. Do not compromise. We've seen in the life of the Apostle Paul, there was no compromise. Until the end of his life, we've not seen one day where he says, because of this situation at hand, I'm going to compromise. Because I got no money as a pastor, so I'm going to pressure people to give money. He never did that. In fact, he worked with his hands writing to the Thessalonians and say, you know how I walked amongst you. I walked with my hands to support myself and to be a blessing to the brethren. So, from amongst you, if someone doesn't work, let him not eat. Don't be a burden to the people. Work. God has given you sound mind. You got strength. Oh boy. There are a lot of things you can do to serve the king. Don't make excuses. Oh, they just, you know, a mosquito bit me. No, Paul was beaten 
by rocks, not a mosquito. <laughs> they left him for dead, still preaching the gospel. But you know what he was called to do? To preach before these uh, governors and kings, which was fulfilled. Where has God appointed your ministry to go? Maybe it is down in this neighborhood to just maybe help kids with jiggers down there. <laughs> maybe to just go up here and just preach to people, help people, whatever. I don't know. All I know is that God has called us, but most of the time we, we turn our blind ears and eyes. We don't want to do it. We don't want to res be, be responsible. If we would be wise, we would get ourselves involved. Even last week when Pastor Josh was encouraging us about our ministry here and just blessing the kids who are on the streets. I mean, if we don't take them in, who is gonna do that? The government is not gonna do that. Purpose to serve the Lord at whatever cost. Amen? Let's pray together. God, we thank you for your blessing over us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this wonderful book that we've gone through for months. Just learning principles after principle. How we ought to serve you. How we ought to conduct ourselves. How we ought to really trust in you. Even right in the middle of stormy seasons. And you have made a promise that you'll be, be with us until the end of time. Lord, we want to hold on to the promise that you have made for us. So therefore, church, do not lose heart, for the Lord is with you. Just take a step of faith, and he will do the rest. So God, we thank you. Holy Spirit, I pray that you come upon us. I know that we all need you, but I pray that you fall afresh on us today. Remind us of those things that you have spoken to us before. We bless you, God. And also we thank you for giving us a wonderful opportunity to serve you with our finances this morning. You say that we should give to you joyfully what we had purpose in our hearts to give to you. So as we do that, as a response of our love to you, I pray that we'll give a glorifying percentage to you for the furtherance of the gospel. We bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.